You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio on ESPN Radio 1700. Now, live in studio, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports. Even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take, how your family, your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content this morning, please join me in welcoming our featured guests. Kathy Moffitt, Orange Unified School District Trustee and member of the Board of Education. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Lisa Lewis is in the house. Preferred Care, welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you with us as well. Never mind you if you ever have any more finance related questions. I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly at 800 306 1990 or ronsingleradio.com. Just remember that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. I bet my guys are a little slow today. They're, oh. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. I knew they'd show up sometime while well, I do have a great team. When it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Nineteen ninety, and of course we should find something every morning on Ron Siegel Radio to celebrate. <laughs> There's a couple of celebrations today. I, I, one of them could get me in trouble, so I will. We got three to celebrate today. National Good Neighbor Day. That's a celebration for today. National Drink Beer Day today. I think it's a little early for that one, so we'll stick with National. Cream pie day today. Strawberry cream pie. Aren't strawberries out of season right now? Hmm, I don't know. We'll celebrate anyway. I can know anything to find a good celebration. We will do it. Uh, you can't celebrate when you're watching the stock market right now, can you? Down 242 points as I speak and dropping further. That's the Dow Jones. I've been sharing with you that our economy is not good regardless of what they want to tell you in Washington, D.C. You're not going to find a whole lot of good news when it comes to the economy. Check out the new numbers that just came out today. How about personal income up 0.3%? The economists were expecting an increase of 0.4%. That's not a very good number. Personal spending up 0.4%. Forecasts of up 0.3%. So we're making three tenths of a percent more and we're spending four tenths of a percent more. Something has got to, of course, in Washington, D.C., you can do that all the time. You can always spend more than you make. That's easy right there. Uh, not a good news. The core PCE rose 0.1% from July. That was a match. 1.3% higher than a year ago. Fed's target rate of 2%, not good there. We're not getting the numbers we wanted there. National Association of Realtors, contracts to buy previously owned homes dropped 1.4% in August. Dropped 1.4, yet Wall Street was expecting a 0.4% increase. Not good news there on the economy. Hmm. Let's see if we can keep on searching for something good. In the, well, maybe that's why the Dow is down 237 points right now. Well, here's the... If you're not a senior citizen, this is good news. The U.S. 10-year Treasury is down five basis points. That's five one-hundredths of a percent. The yield on the U.S. Treasury, 2.11%. Why do I say if you're not a senior citizen, that's good news? Well... Here's the fact of the matter. Again, Washington will not tell you this. You can only hear this here on Ron Siegel Radio. The one that gets hurt the most by a low interest rate environment is our senior citizens. They are living on fixed income. Where does fixed income come from? Interest rates. What's the safest interest in the world 
The safest investment in the world is the U.S. Treasury. Well, it's at 2.11%, and if it's not keeping up with inflation, guess what? Our seniors, their income is not increasing because they're on fixed income. That's why you look at it and you say, okay, well, these low interest rates, they're supposed to help the housing market. We just saw that may not be doing that right there in the report that came out from the National Association of Realtors. But the low interest rates are a good, good news if you know what you're doing. That's the issue. Do you know? And I, and I just saw this came from Fannie Mae. Now, Fannie Mae obviously provides, is one of the biggest purchasers of mortgages in the world. They, they'll, they're the ones that do the underwriting. Most lenders underwrite to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac guidelines. There is the FHA program as well. But here's the statistic that came out from Fannie Mae, and I repeat this to you, or I wanna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hammer this one until you get tired of hearing me say it. 37% of America, 37% uh, of American homeowners believe they have 20% more, 20 or more equity in their homes. 37%. According to Fannie Mae, reality is 69% of American homeowners have over 20% equity in their homes. So we're saying right there, with a, with a spread of 32%, one in three Americans are wrong about the equity they have in their home. One in three. Are you the one? I don't know. If you want to get the idea of what you have, free service from Ron Siegel Radio, all you need to do is text RSRCMA. Ron Siegel Radio, Com Comparative Market Analysis. RSRCMA to 79564, we will give you a complimentary analysis. One of the professionals in your neighborhood will give you an analysis of what your home value is. Why, do I, why is that important? Well, there are people that want to move into a bigger house and they can't. There are people that want to get into a smaller house and they don't think they can because they don't believe they've got the equity in their home to make a change. Our mission here, Ron Siegel Radio, is to educate now, I've shared with you before that I do have a real estate license. I do not use it. I've never bought or sold a piece of property for somebody other than myself. I don't use that license. Had to have it for various reasons, but what I want you to know is that it tells, gives me some inside information as to who the great real estate professionals are in your neighborhood. And frequently, it's not the person that puts out the most signs. They're good at putting signs out. I want you to know somebody that knows the market, then that maybe it is a person that puts out a lot of signs. That's that's possible. But I want you to have great information so you can make an educated decision. That's what the broadcast is about, educating you so you can make the best decision for you and your family. You cannot make an educated decision if you're ignorant. It's just the way it is. We want to get you educated. So all you have to do is text RSR CMA to 79564, I'll have, one, I'll have one of the professionals in your neighborhood get a, an analysis to you that'll give you the right information about your property, your neighborhood, your side of the street, your view, maybe you're on a golf course, maybe you're on the wrong side of the course, maybe you're on the right side of the course. All of that information can only come, you can't get that from Zillow, they tell you right on their website how inaccurate their information is. We're gonna get that information to you because of listening to Ron Siegel Radio, we really appreciate you. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, the Orange Unified School District, they've got a little battle going on. We want to educate you on that as well. We're also going to talk about selling your house on your own. Should you do it? Yes or no? I've got some great information on that for you as well. Tough time getting a credit card? We'll tell you how to get one. And if you're a disabled veteran, how you can get a mortgage. All that and more, you can reach us anytime. Call our offer number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. 
As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. Ron Siegel Radio Date Night Trivia presented by Reunion Kitchen and Drink. Friday, Ron will pose a question based on on air conversations during the prior seven programs. The person to post the answer according to the guest conversation will win a date night package, including a dinner gift card for Reunion Kitchen and Drink. You might even be able to say hi to Ron when you visit Reunion Kitchen and Drink. You Direct IRA Services has helped thousands of Americans invest their IRA outside of the stock market into real estate, land, private notes, and more to improve their financial future. You Direct IRA is a third-party administrator providing complete and accurate information on self-directed IRAs so you can make the most of your retirement funds. Educating individual investors and professionals is the cornerstone of You Direct IRA. We have events right here in Southern California geared towards self-directed investing. We also offer webinars so no matter where you are, you can learn to earn Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today brought to you by the VIP Hero Program. Love that Hero Program. It is geared for our military, first responders, teachers, nurses, all these folks that do so many great things for our community. Well, as a thank you, Ron Siegel Radio, we have put together some wonderful people who are willing to participate. The real estate professionals giving five to $10,000 in rebates from their commissions if, you're, if you qualify. We've got the lenders, they're gonna give you some rebates. We've got attorneys, credit repair folks, all looking to give some sort of rebates to help out with our heroes. Ron's, it's a VIPheroprogram.com, VIPheroprogram.com. So you can see if you qualify. Thinking of selling, here's some reasons you should not for sale by owner. I tell you this all the time, that, 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 that trying to sell your property on your own, you could do it, but you could probably do knee surgery on your own. That'll work. You can go online and, and operate on yourself. You can do open heart surgery on yourself. Get educated, though. You need somebody that's smart enough to do it. I'm not saying you're not smart. I'm just saying... The owner of ForSaleByOwner.com, when he had his property to sell in New York City, he hired a real estate professional. You gotta negotiate with a lot of people. You're familiar with that. You've got a buyer, you've got the, the, maybe the title company. How about the appraiser? 
Do you understand that? Exposure to prospective buyers and purchasers. Do you want to be doing that? Recent studies have shown that 88% of buyers search online for a home. Do you have a strategy for that? Results come from the internet. 43% of the buyers start their home purchasing uh, with a search on the internet. 9% from a yard sign. Here's the bright one. 1% of the people actually find their home in the newspaper. Why do you think, and, and, well you know my feeling about the, the Orange County National Enquirer, or some people call it the Orange County Register, uh, worthless. For sale by owner, more and more difficult, you net more money when you use an agent. How about that one? You can do all the work on your own and get less money by, by selling the property for sale by owner. There's the issues. You make the decision. That is the real-time real estate segment, again, brought to you by our VIP Hero Program. A little bit of uh, controversy going on or discussion going on in the community right now. Hearing this a lot, a lot in Orange County. I saw this while I was out of town. It started uh, hitting my emails. And we've been chatting about this a little bit just getting me briefed on it. So thank goodness Kathy Moffitt from the Orange Unified School District is in the house. Welcome again. Thank you very much. Glad to have you with us and, and share with us. So tell us a little bit about Orange Unified School District to start with and then I'll kind of lay the foundation for what's going on here. Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, Orange Unified School District is a relatively large school district. We have nearly 20, excuse me, nearly 30,000 students, kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, we have, uh, I, I believe it's 39 schools. We're about the fifth largest school district in Orange County and we encompass the cities of Orange, Anaheim Hills, Villa Park, and tiny bits of Santa Ana and Garden Grove. Anaheim Hills, as a matter of fact, makes up fully like a third of Orange Unified School District, something that people may not may not be aware of. Well, you know something, I'm one of them that didn't know that a <laughs> third of the district is Anaheim Hills. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty, pretty significant portion of significant, it. Significant, absolutely, yeah. So here's the the little bit of information I was, that was shared with me, and maybe you can, can set me straight or confirm, deny, however you wish, is I was told that there was a vacancy, uh, a vacant seat because one of the school board members moved out of the area. You have to be live in the area to be on the board. Correct. One of the members moved out, so it created a vacancy, and there were I've got the applications of two different people that applied for the position. Were there more than two that applied for that for that position? Yes, actually, there were nine altogether who who applied. Okay, then. So how did we? How did it get narrowed? I don't. There was two primary apparently. Well, you're you're correct in saying that we had a vacancy, and okay. so we had to fill it. And the law provides that uh, the school district can either call for a special election to fill that void, or uh, can uh, appoint. And if the school district has a special election, it's very costly because the school district has to bear the entire cost of the election. Uh, Is there a certain amount of time that we have that has to be done within? Yes, yes. There are uh, 30 days, 60 days. There are time limits. There's time limits. Okay. Prescribed within the law. So we couldn't wait until the primaries no. in in no next year. No, has to be had to has to. The appointment had to be taken place by, or the call for an election had to take place by September the 29th. Wow. So that's tomorrow. So anyway, we, there was some lead time, and, and the board discussed, shall we appoint, shall we call for a special election? Uh, we, we chose to go the route of appointing because the cost was just so great. We certainly don't have um, an extra half a million dollars to devote to, you know, potentially the cost hey, of a I'm special a, I'm election. A, I'm a simple guy. Back up there. Half a million dollars for an election. Up to that, yeah, four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars is the estimate. And that money has to come get, get taken out of the school board, so it comes basically from our kids. Absolutely, yes. I agree with you. I don't. I wouldn't want to have a special election either. Right. <laughs> Make, the the <laughs> appointment makes a whole lot more sense. Exactly. So what's the process then for getting to the to the determining 
the candidates for appointment and then making that appointment? Well, actually, the law is pretty silent on how you do it, and so it is up to the school board to decide a process. And our superintendent, with the guidance of the California School Boards Association, uh, suggested some processes that we might uh, employ to uh, take these interested uh, applicants and uh, find out more about them and so the superintendent suggested that perhaps we could do a paper screening perhaps we could develop some interview questions we could share the interview questions with the candidates and we could randomly select the order for the interviews these are the suggestions came from the superintendent we could allow three minutes for each candidate to introduce themselves we could have all questions asked by the same person and our moderator to ensure some kind of consistency across the candidates. We could allow for some follow-up clarifying questions by trustees after all the questions were asked. And as a, as a trustee reading these suggestions, I thought that sounded like a pretty thorough process. So I came to the meeting, which was a, uh, on September 15th, for the purpose of uh, deciding upon a process and was was rather surprised when a motion was made to significantly abridge the suggested process that was um, given to us by the superintendent and to only do a paper screening offline actually and then uh, to only have the process at, a, at an open meeting include just the three minute self introduction. Uh, I thought that was too brief. This process stands in the place of an election, which is certainly a thorough vetting of candidates over, sure. over a period of time. And so I felt like the, the community deserves uh, more information than that, more time and more ways to get information. So I made motions to put back in the questioning and that kind of thing, but those motions were not entertained by the board majority, and so we uh, we ended up with the process uh, including only a paper screening and then three minutes of self-introduction by the candidates. And then what, did the vote take place that same evening, September 15th? No, no. Uh, later on, uh, on September the 21st, was the time at which we were going to uh, hear the candidates speak and then make a selection. So you're going to hear the candidates speak and make a selection all the same at the same time without ever having an opportunity to redirect any kind of questioning to them. Not in public and what, what was you like suggested was that each board member reach out to the candidates or have the candidates reach out to the board members and have conversations, phone conversations or that kind of thing, which is something that I did but I also came to the meeting on the 21st with my synopsis of each conversation that I had because I wanted to share that with the public. I thought that that questioning at least could be shared through my vantage point. Um, well, you're an elected comment. official, right? Absolutely, yes. So that's really what we ask you to do is right. to go out there and be our eyes and ears for your constituents. Right. Makes right. a lot of sense to me. <laughs> I mean, well, that's, kind of, that's kind of what we want. So, I mean, heck, if we can elect you to save us a half a million dollars, may or up to a half a million dollars, and keep that in the coffers for the kids, seems like it makes a lot of sense. Well, that's, that's what I thought, and that's what I, I thought we would have an opportunity to do on the 21st. Turns out that wasn't the case. Well, we're going to chat about what the case was, how we got to this. I'm looking at two applications of two of the candidates. They are radically different when you look at the information, the background, the history of each of them. I'm just looking at two of them, and, uh, and we'll chat about that when we come back. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your current events, real estate, financial markets, schooling our kids. I guess that deals with our real estate too, doesn't it? And our future. You can reach me anytime. Call our offer number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. You can even check out the replays if you miss any part of our broadcast. Shame on you, but you can get them ronsegalradio.com in the archives or on YouTube because our shows are being live streamed as well. Stay tuned to Ron Siegel Radio. We will be back in just a few. 
renting a home, do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Seagull Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SeagullLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Are you a veteran? Own a home and need money? The Seagull Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. <laughs> Southern California attorneys have over 15,000 real estate agents to call in Orange County for their personal and professional needs. Why do they overwhelmingly call Melinda Johnson? Simple. It's the Melinda Johnson trifecta. Melinda is an attorney, real estate broker, and realtor. Does your family deserve the same professional services California lawyers demand? Call Melinda Johnson at 714-863-5485. That's 714-863-5485. Or on the web at freedomfirstproperties.com. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 3.5, and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's one 1- 800-306-1990 or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime. 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Mortgage Minute today is being brought to you by our area trusted professionals. Well, the biggest companies in the world all have a board of directors. Yet in our households, we don't set up the household board of directors. I've been talking about this. I've been preaching this for five years now. Setting up your household board of directors. And we can help you do that with a three-minute survey. That's all it takes is a three-minute survey for you to go. Text ATP, Area Trusted Professional, ATP to 79564. Insurance people, tax preparers, CPA, Are you getting double-digit safe, secure returns on your investment? Most people are not. There's financial planners that know how to do that. Lawyers, real estate, mortgage, all of these are part of your household board of directors. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Fill out a three-minute survey. We will get you that whole board of directors for professionals we have vetted in your neighborhood. And... A issue that is near and dear to my heart is the topic today of our Mortgage Minute. How can a disabled veteran get a mortgage? Disabled veterans, whew. Any, actually any veteran is, I am I'm eternally thankful for every veteran. If it's not for the men and women that are out there fighting for on our behalf, we couldn't do a radio broadcast, we couldn't 
have the arguments and discussions and debates that we're going to be talking about at the school board in a few minutes if it wasn't for veterans who are out there sacrificing so we can be free, so we can have our own uh, conversation, our own opinions. So the question came in, I'm a 65-year-old disabled veteran interested in buying an $85,000 home. My income is from Social Security Disability Insurance, Supplemental Security Income. My veteran son will be living with me and contributing to my mortgage. Good credit, could put up to $60,000 down if needed. Don't know where I can get any help. Well, give us a call because we'll certainly put you in touch with somebody that can be of assistance. The, the, the Veterans Administration loan, the VA loan, best loan on the market. The military people have earned it. You can do it with no down payment. You can do it with that 60000 is a great down payment. No mortgage insurance, lower than average closing costs, no prepayment penalties. Pay it off early if you want to. And as a disabled veteran, there are even some um, reductions in the amount of the VA funding fee for disabled veterans. Depends on what you qualify for. It's that DD-214 that has all that information on there. If you're a veteran, you will understand that DD-214 and the certificate of eligibility. Those are the two big issues. And make sure, make sure that we get you in on the VIP Hero program so you get the rebates from the real estate professionals as well. You're not going to have to use all that $60,000 for the down payment. There are different grants that are available. All of that for our veterans, our heroes. Thank you for your service and we appreciate everything you do. Give us a call, 800-306-1990. I'll put you in touch with somebody that will understand all of these programs for you and get you the rebates just as importantly. That is the Mortgage Minute, again brought to you by your area trusted professionals endorsed by Ron Siegel Radio. I'm going to continue our conversation this morning with Kathy Moffitt, Orange Unified School District trustee. How long have you been doing this, Kathy? Well, I was elected in 2001, so it's 14 years now. 14 years. So you, you've uh, seen a few changes going on? Yes, there have been some changes. <laughs> there have been some changes, and we're very proud of our schools. And we have wonderful communities that we serve, great kids, great families, and excellent professionals. We have had, over the last two years in our school district, two of our teachers have been selected statewide teachers of the year. Wow. Can you believe that? And there's got to be I don't know, tens, hundreds of thousands of teachers of in the thousands. state. I don't know how many, but it's a huge honor, and we're so we're so proud of those teachers. One from Knoll Canyon, one from Panorama School. Be that's beautiful. Yes. That, I mean, that is. So I was asking you before we we went too far. What is the what is what is the job of a school board member? What do you actually do as a board member? Well, we are elected and our job is to set policy and direction for our school district and to hire and uh, oversee the work of the superintendent and uh, to accept re uh, responsibility and accountability for everything that goes on in the school district. Is the school district a partisan organization? Absolutely not, no. Okay, so it doesn't, you're not voted based on because I know uh, Republican X, that's how I get in. Not we are we're nonpartisan. Nonpartisan. So nonpartisan. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that was, I was just curious because I didn't, I didn't know the answer to that all as well. So now we've got, we spoke about in the last segment about the, the need for a new board member. We spoke a little bit about the initial proposal for how it was going to be selected. And we also spoke, and we're not, going to, we're not going to go through all of that again because you can listen to it on our replay if you didn't catch that the first time. So after you got to the point of, uh, of hearing these three-minute discussions uh, or, or introductions, were you allowed to, to bring up the, the background that you were able to discover? In Each of the school board members were, were suggested to have a discovery call with each of the candidates. That was suggested just as an informal suggestion by one of the board members. 
the the official process was that we gave to those who expressed interest a candidate information form and asked that they fill it out. It had about a dozen questions plus information about what where the candidate lived because they had to be a registered voter within the boundaries of trustee area one which is this trustee area here in Anaheim Hills and um, you know give some answers to why they were interested and some information about their background and experience and I was very heartened by the strong pool of applicants that had expressed interest. Really? So there was a, there was a because I'm looking at only two applications. One of them is very sketchy. One of them seems very in depth. And you know, it's just from an outsider. I, I would share with you that you know I've been an athletic booster club person. I've got three boys that have been very involved in athletics. I've, my wife's been involved in the parent teacher groups. I would not feel qualified to be a trustee as you are just as a you know as a parent so I, I'm just just throwing that out there you I'm sure it takes a whole lot more than than what I'm used to what would you look for in a colleague or a school board member what is do you have a litmus test or something like that interesting that you asked because before we went to that meeting on the 21st where the selection was to be made I sketched that out for myself and I thought okay what am I looking for in a candidate and these were my top uh, priorities some interest in Orange Unified School District expressed by the candidate and also a desire to contribute something to the community also commitment to Orange Unified demonstrated by perhaps that person went to Orange Unified schools their children attended Orange Unified schools perhaps they worked or volunteered uh, at Orange Unified schools and were a supporter of public education those are things that I would look for I also would look for connections with the Orange Unified School District community uh, in terms of a person who had connections with neighbors who may or may not who probably hopefully had children in Orange Unified schools a person who had work relationships with people in the community, a person who had volunteer relationships and perhaps social and civic relationships with people. And the reason for that is that it's important that trustees in a school district be avenues of communication to give information about the schools to our community and also to receive input, suggestions, complaints, uh, compliments, and take those into the deliberations of the school board. We, I also look for someone who expressed a focus on education as a top priority. Interesting, okay, so here's the, some of the information that, that kind of piqued my interest and then when Lisa brought this to my attention as well, I, there was there was a there was two candidates that I was only aware before you got here today that there was there's a, a whole slate of candidates. I was told there were two candidates. One of them that was an overwhelming favorite, and that was a Miss Yamasaki. And there was another candidate that apparently has been appointed. Is that the correct term? Is a Mr. Salas? Correct. That's correct. Okay, so how did it come to appointing Mr. Salas? Well, all of the as it turns out, all of the one candidate withdrew from, from consideration okay. by his own volition. The eight remaining candidates, I made a motion actually at the meeting, can we just hear all the eight rather than just the three who were survivors of a paper screening? And the board voted to uh, allow that. So we did hear a three minute introduction by all of the uh, eight. Um, as I said, there were several among them who had deep experience and knowledge and commitment to Orange Unified Schools. And I think uh, the selection of any of those three or perhaps four people would have been uh, a good selection. Um, when we got to the meeting, there were there was time for public comment. There were about 35 people who came forward to give public comment about the process, about uh, uh, supporting a particular candidate. 30 of the 35 comments were people who came to support to speak in support of Andrea Yamasaki, who was one of the candidates. When I thought about that, and she was one of my top people in the first place, I thought, this is demonstration right here in front of me that this person has connections to not only parents in the community, but also civic-minded people, also people from other parts of the community. And I think that that is so important because you have to be the conduit for two-way communication within your community as a school board trustee. Sounds like it makes a lot of sense to me. We're going to chat more about this and why 
Miss Yamasaki wasn't the appointment. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. It's going to be an interesting conversation in that last segment. You're not going to want to meet it, miss it. Remember, you can reach me anytime. Call our off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsiegelradio.com. Stay tuned. We will be back in just a few. I love Solutions for Change. They're dedicated to solving family homelessness, one family, one community at a time. They do beautiful work, truly changing lives. For a big event of the year, it's the fifth annual gala, an evening to remember with our American heroes, Saturday, September 19th in the Jet Source Hangar at the Carlsbad Airport. It's going to be awesome. Taya Kyle, author and widow of Chris Kyle from American Sniper, is going to be the main speaker. Joining Taya will be Navy SEAL and former pro football player, Clint Bruce, and I have the honor of attending the festivities as well. Jeffrey Strauss from Pamplemouse Grill will be catering the evening. There's going to be a hosted craft cocktail reception, live entertainment, silent and live auction, all to raise money for Solutions for Change. Tickets are available. Please grab them as soon as possible. I'd love to see you there. 760-941-6545. That's 760-941-6545 or solutionsforchange.com. Do you have a loved one who wants to stay in their home, but you have health concerns about it? The Preferred Care Team understands the challenges of caring for your loved ones. Their goal is to keep seniors as independent as possible while maintaining their health, safety, and overall well-being. Whether you need just a few hours a week or 24-hour care, Preferred Care caregivers are trained to meet your needs. Call Preferred Care at 714-696-9150. That's 714-696-9150. Or visit preferredcare.com. Attention homeowner 62 and older. Do you worry if you can afford to keep your home? Are you concerned about paying all your monthly expenses? Or do you simply wish you could live a better retirement? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may qualify for a program that can help. It's called FHA Reverse Mortgage. It's insured by the federal government. You'll receive tax-free money. You aren't required to make any monthly mortgage payments, and you still own your home. Siegel Lending Team is a local leader in FHA reverse mortgages. Call free to get your free reverse mortgage guide, free custom quote. And when you call now, you can get all your questions answered by local experts. There is no monthly mortgage payment and tax-free money you can use for health care expenses, home improvements, or just live a better retirement with peace of mind. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-1990 to get your free reverse mortgage guide and quote. You'll also find them on the web at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Call 800-306-1990 now. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037 and DRE number 01869452. It's not every day your home gets flooded, but when it happens, you've got the good people at APRIS on your side. With over 25 years of construction and insurance experience, they can turn any disaster around, making your home good as new. For 24-7 support, call 844-GO-APRIS or find us on the web at www.apris.me. Day, night, rain, or shine. When it happens to you, you know what to do. Go <coughs> Remember, call 844-GO-APRIS. That's 844-462-7747. VA Haas Casino and Resort has added 1,000 exciting new slots. These all-new slots take your game to a whole new level. Enjoy more wins and more jackpots than ever, only at VA Haas. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. Your Credit Matters segment today brought to you by Commerce for a Cause. Great organization. Again, I have no ownership with them, I just love to support great groups. Are you a business owner? Do you take credit cards? If so, you are paying a credit card processing fee. 
How about Commerce for a Cause matching that processing fee and then giving a 20% rebate to the charitable organization of your choice? That's why I like him, is you're going to give 20% back to the charity of your choice. If you had a tough time getting a credit card, here's the things that you might want to know about, things might be looking up. I've shared with you that, holy cow, maybe this is the reason why it's looking up, is maybe that's why this, the consumer spending has increased, and I told you in the opening segment. First quarter this year, consumers opened up 73 million new credit card accounts, which is a 14% increase in account originations from the first quarter of 2014. Think about that. Roughly 330 million Americans, that's including men, women, and children, and have 73 million new credit card accounts in the first quarter of the year alone. Holy cow. ABA breaks out top scores. Subprime borrowers below 680, prime borrowers 680 to 759, prime borrowers 760 and above, 14% jump driven by a 28% increase in the subprime accounts. So it is getting easier to get a credit card. Don't use them too much. I suggest to you all the time, the reason that you use them, the best use for the credit cards is strategic. If we can show you how to use your credit card strategically, to then get your credit score up so that you can save more money on your expenses. That's the purpose. That's why I discuss it. That's the Your Credit Matters segment, again, brought to you by Commerce for a Cause. Continuing our discussion this morning with Kathy Moffitt, Orange Unified School District Trustee, member of the Board of Education. We've been chatting about uh, a real up, a community uproar. And I guess this is what the beauty of our society is, is that we can disagree in a respectful, I hope it's respectful, manner. And apparently there's been an appointment of a Mr. Salas to the Orange Unified School District. Just happened in the last last week, Kathy? Yes, last Thursday night. And some, member, some people within the community are disgruntled about the process of the way it happened. I don't know that any of them... Um, know Mr. Salas personally. Um, maybe they do, I just don't know whether they do or don't, but apparently some are not happy with the process. They had a different candidate. And Kathy was sharing with us, 35 people got up and spoke at the board meeting, 30 of whom were, for, were in favor of Miss Yamasaki. Now I'm assuming, maybe you'll correct me again here if I'm wrong, that any of the candidates had the opportunity to um, stir some excitement for their constituency and bring them to the meeting as well. Definitely, yes. So it wasn't that Miss Yamasaki was the only one allowed to bring anybody. No, no, for sure, that's that's true. And I need to, uh, I'm, I misspoke. The meeting where the selection was made was on Monday, the 21st of September, not last Thursday, but it was still rather recently. Yeah. So yes, there was overwhelming support for uh, Mrs. Yamasaki, and uh, her resume was certainly strong and packed with community involvement and leadership, uh, particularly in our schools. I am looking at, uh, and here's one of the questions I'm going to share with you quite candidly, Kathy, that when this came to me, um, I was a bit hesitant just in the initial conversation because I, I was told that Ms. Yamasaki was overwhelmingly more qualified than Mr. Salas, and I, and, but there was no background given to me on that. It was just said that she was far and away more qualified. And my question was, you know, the, the, the school board made this decision, and what were the extra qualifications? What were the difference in qualifications? Just looking at the papers, and I didn't have that opportunity to hear that um, three-minute intro that, that was presented at the board or, or do those discovery calls that you did. I'm looking at, at her application from just the two I see. She is very, very well qualified. Is that was that your assessment? Absolutely, absolutely. She was very well qualified, and the candidate information um, forms were posted on our website, so that the public, if they came to our website and were interested, could see uh, the applications that the different candidates had put in. And and you can tell there's there's quite a stark difference. Absolutely. Was, to me, if I was just if I was a board uh, a voting person just with nothing more than these two documents in front of me, I can see why there's so much, um, so many people in favor of Ms. Yamasaki. Yes, and 
One of the things that was actually a, a disappointment was that there was no discussion time for the Board of Education built into the agenda for the meeting on the 21st. And so therefore, at the conclusion of the three minutes where each candidate gave their introductory remarks, we went right straight to a vote without discussion before and without explanation or rationale afterwards. And I think that led to some of the uh, disconcerted responses and uh, concerns in, in the audience. From a person that has not been to one of your meetings, is there generally after you have the, the time period for open discussion or, or the community uh, input, do you generally have time for the, the board members to speak to each other at, or the, the public in here? Yes, we do. That's normally the, the way it goes, yes. Interesting. Okay, so it seems like, I, I hate to use the term, but I will because it's me. That sounds like a little railroading here, and I'm not going to ask you to comment on that. That that there was somebody had an agenda somewhere, someplace, but you know we don't know. Mr. Salas has now been appointed, and apparently there is a grassroots group of people that are not happy about that. What's the options at this point? Well, when when the vote was taken and Mr. Salas was appointed, there was general shock in the room. Everyone was extremely taken aback as was I and it took a while for people to collect their thoughts and understand what had just happened and since then uh, members of the community have uh, decided to ask what can be done just the way you just asked and the law provides that the community if dissatisfied with the appointment can within a certain specified period of time if they collect enough signatures force the school district to hold a special election and it's my understanding that that signature gathering process is underway now and so so basically the based on the activities of the board um, mr. Salas is the is the nominee so to speak or appointee and then we're looking at if the, if there's enough signatures gathered we're looking at that half a million dollar or up to a half a million dollar expense for having a special election Yes, that's correct. And ironically enough, that special election, again, just from a lay person, means that somebody's going to have to round up the troops, so to speak, just as Miss Yamasaki already did and have a group of people come out there and say, you know something, this is who we want. Well, it gives an opportunity for a brief pre-election time where there can be some campaigning done, just as in a regular election, where candidates have to go forward and meet with the community and, and um, convince them that they are the right person for the job. Who would be voting on this? Uh, is it just a specific, a small segment of the population, or is it anybody within the Orange Unified School District jurisdiction? The system within Orange Unified, and it varies from school district to school district, is that all the voters within Orange Unified, which is that large uh, territory that I described, are will be voting. Wow, so, so I guess that's that's why it, there is such a huge expense to it, because if it's the, tell us again, generally, the, the coverage map. It's the city of Orange, city of, of Anaheim Hills, the city of Villa Park, and tiny bits of Santa Ana and Garden Grove. We, territorially, we are the largest school district in Orange County, but that goes down into the canyon area where it's not populated and, and things. But still, we are a large district, over 100,000 voters. Over 100,000, holy cow, over 100,000 voters. So for, I guess the, the advertising and the print companies are going to be uh, excited to have this going on. And I really appreciate you coming in today. I mean, it's it's a, it's a interesting issue. It's a very fascinating. It's great to see how our system works properly. And it would be nice to really understand how we got to this point that so many people were so in favor of one candidate and we didn't end up with that candidate. It would be very interesting to see. As, as voters, we obviously have the opportunity of, of making the decision on not only this issue, but you can also have a decision or a voice on those who made this commentary because there's, there's elections for that as well. So it's, it's all to be heard. The voters will be heard, and we certainly appreciate you coming in. We really ask for you, though, to set your first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A very big thanks to Taylor, who's engineering us today. 
And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. You're listening to ESPN Radio 1700.